afternoon and evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Zachary Nolan. Welcome back. Carter Nolan is behind the camera. Of course I am. We, as you can tell, these are going to include live game reactions from Canada Life Center as we went to the game. A lovely win. The Winnipeg Jets defeated the Edmonton Oilers 5 to nothing. Great to see. Before we go any further, first off, let us know your thoughts on the pre-intro. It's new. It's improved. It's nice. Tell us about it. And also, this video, I'm happy to say, is sponsored. Check out what it is. Do you find yourself not having razors with skin safe technology? Carter? Yeah? You have a razor? Yeah, here's this no name one. Oh, okay. That's where Manscaped can save the day. With Manscaped's exceptional selection of products, you can find every tool for the job, like the lawnmower 4.0. Man, I don't know. It looks like the same lawnmower. <laughs> no, not that one. Carter, do you have another razor? Yeah, here you go. Get the Lawnmower 4.0 with its impressive skin safe technology, as well as the Beard Hedger, the Weed Whacker 2.0 for no ear and nose hair trimming, and so much more from Manscaped. I must say, after receiving this product from Manscaped, I have, I've been quite impressed with it, especially this Beard Hedger here. Me personally, this is my personal favorite, the you know, best razor I have used, and I just love the way that you can adjust the height really easily, but they have some excellent products. So what are you waiting for? Make sure to check out the description below, click on the link, and use promo code NHP on Manscaped for 20% off your order. Now, without further ado, back to the video. Yes, yes, yes. This is a big step for Zach, because as you know, like year one, Zach, there's nothing going on here, nothing. And look how far we've come. And it's great. You should definitely check out the product. It's actually some good shit. It is a real. lot of great stuff, it, it's, honestly. It's, it's, Do it's check real. it out. Uh, there will be a link uh, in the description below. As well as the pinned comment. The com yeah, the pinned comment. That's the one that's going to... And it will also be in the description. Yes! Check it out. Let's get on to the feature, feature film, shall we? So, Winnipeg Jets beat the Edmonton Oilers 5-0. Honestly, they beat the Bakers Bakersfield Condors 5-0. There was no Oilers flying to Winnipeg. Um, Dylan Holloway, DeHarnay, Cody CC, Brett Kulak. I'm still missing one finger for my one hand. Like, there, there was nothing. There was no way that this game was going to go any other way than how it did tonight. However, they did tempt fate by waiting until the third period to absolutely blow them out of the building. But I digress. Um, we got interesting line combinations, kind of like last game. What they did was they, they, they split it up into sections. There was two lines that were designated as definitely going to be playing on the Winnipeg Jets this year with the top line of Velarde, Shafley, and Connor, and the fourth, and the most likely fourth line of, uh, Kupari, Nemesnikov, and Baron. and then they did a high-scoring, um, uh, AHLers line of uh, Gustafson, uh, VL, and I believe Ford. I believe it. I think uh, Ford was on that line. Yeah. Yeah. It, there's. It gets muck muddied for me. And then there's a young youngsters line that includes uh, Torgerson and Lucius, and I'm forgetting one person who dressed tonight, which probably Reichel. huh? Reichel. And Reichel is all. Yeah, Reichel was on the, the one line, and also Gustafson was there as well too. Um, said but yeah, so. did I? Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Well, anyway, but the point <laughs> still stands and you can tell there's a big drop off between those two sets of lines. The two NHL regular lines looked pretty comfortable throughout the entire game. I was really impressed with, uh, Gabriel Velarde's ability on the power play to see a lot of Velarde! Jesus Christ, to see a lot of open lanes. Um, and it on and it paid dividends with the Jets scoring on the power play in the first period to make it one nothing reaction here. There, yeah. There we go.
from Gabriel Velarde and Mark Scheifele is the official scoring summary on that goal. A power play goal will make it one nothing. Um, and oh yes, of course, Calvin Pickard, and who, which is a name I haven't heard in a while, was in net for the Edmonton Oilers. Good for him, by the way. Honestly, he's tried to really make his way back in the NHL. Good for him. He had an okay game, honestly. He just began to get shelled by the third period. Um, and then in net for the Winnipeg Jets tonight was Laurent Brossois, and I am. Never felt so stable and so content with the with the goaltending of the Winnipeg Jets right now. Like the depth of goaltending that the Jets have throughout the system gives me a lot of stability and a lot of happiness. Yes. And one thing I gotta mention about Brassois, it's he his puck handling is like ten times better than Hellebuck's. Yeah. I never feel nervous. When it, he's got it. It is a relieving thing to see, I must say. Like, stable goaltending is something that we've always had with Hellebuck, but has always been a, how far do we have to, like, how far do we have to take this horse? Um, I feel like we can really manage, we can really manage the load here. Um, so, let's go to the one, a couple things that I, uh, bugged me a bit about this game. Oh, my God. In heaven, heaven above. Car, I, it, <laughs> oh, Jesus. Um, the thing that bugged me about this game, uh, a couple penalties were not great. So, my word for the worst jet tonight is going to be in a two-way tie between, uh, guys who both got on the score sheet, actually. Um, but, Logan Stanley and, and, uh, Jeffrey Veal. Jeffrey Veal took two penalties tonight, and I didn't like any, either of them. They were both really bad penalties you didn't need to take. I liked his physicality, but I just felt like it was very hollow. It was kind of like that toughness. Like, we don't need it. You know what I mean? Like, we didn't need it where we got it. And Logan Stanley looked absolutely exposed on some lines tonight. Like, there were times where he got absolutely just stood up by guys that should not have been able to stand him got up. got stood up by guys 5'10". And it was, it's ugly. It's uh, He looked like Bambi out there. Now, that being said... We go, like, honestly, the first period is pretty mundane. We get out shots slightly, and it keeps everything kind of tight together. Nothing is really clicking fully in terms of offensive opportunities. The second period, uh, it opens up a bit, but only slightly still. Like, it was it was a very slow burn of a hockey game. Um, uh, I honestly, I didn't hate Neil Pionk tonight. I thought Neil Pionk had a fine game. It was a fine game. He was with... He was paired with Sandberg for the most part, and Sandberg can keep anybody honest, so it's not. it was never going to really be a problem. By the way, Sandberg looks so good going into this year. Yeah, threw a guy right into the crossbar. Yeah, he was, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a couple penalties either way. Uh, good uh, penalty killing by the Jets. At one point, they had to kill a five on three, which is never an easy task, no matter who's on the ice, which they did successfully. And let's just get into... Actually, yeah, like, once again, it's great that Bellardi got a point uh, tonight. That was crucial. I feel like it really helps him simmer in. Um, I really want to talk about this fourth line, because I absolutely, like, the future fourth line. When you the say, second okay, line, the future fourth line. I got okay. it, I got it. The second line of the Jets tonight was so good. So relaxed and so composed. They played all over the ice tonight in uh, situations on the power play, penalty killing, and everything in between. And I feel, and I really like how they move the puck. They all move with a lot of intensity, and there's a lot, and there's a hard forecheck. I feel like Rasmus Kupari was was a name that wasn't getting mentioned a lot from this trade with the LA Kings, and he has been a very, he could be a very much a hidden gem for the Winnipeg Jets. Let's go into the third period where this game begins to open up. Starting off on the score, on the, a little bit of a scoring train here, Neil Pionk scores. Um, with a blast from the point on a zone entry to make a 2-0 reaction here. Break. Scoring play is Pionk from Nemesnikov and Samberg at to make it two nothing. Then we'd have a little bit of a, a, a stretch of about six minutes where not a lot would happen. We had some great, actually, a bit was happening. 
Uh, Pionk saves a goal that should that was behind beats uh, Laurent Brossois. Stopped there by Neil Pionk. Not saying that Brossois was caught out of his out of motion. He was still making great saves while this is all happening. Uh, really controlling rebounds, or at the very worst, he was keeping him, his body centered when the rebounds were bouncing around so that players had to try to shoot around him rather than he was putting himself in bad situations, which is a big difference. Some goalies are extremely will extremely overcommit to trying to get rid of that puck, and it just causes panic in, in, in a crease, and it's not always needed. Uh, I want to talk about Salmonson. Uh, Elias Salmonson is going to be a top four defenseman in two to three years for the Winnipeg Jets. I'm almost positive. That kid's defensive skills and his defensive decision making is impeccable. He looked really at home on the power play late in the game too when we gave him a couple reps. Um, penalty killing, he's solid. He just does all the right things well. And yes, it helps that he's playing with Josh Morrissey, but he cut, put, put, carried his slack as much as Josh Morrissey carried slack tonight. And I think that needs to be commended. Um, keeping it going, uh, David Gustafson, the Gus Butts, gets rolling on a great deflection to make it 3 nothing reaction here. Yeah, the official scoring play is Gustafson from Stanley and VL uh, to make it 3 nothing. A great deflection to go uh, high high glove, I guess. High blocker, I believe. Um, yeah, no, great play there. Honestly, great movement down low. They started to get the cycle game going a lot as the game went on, which is why, again, and also, too, just the depth of players the Oilers were bringing here, they just ran out of gas. And I think if you're an Oilers fan, you don't, you don't feel bad about this game at all. It's it's cool. It's fine. Like you're not worse off. You didn't get blown out ten nothing, which, as we all know, is a new thing that can happen to people. Uh, I actually Car Carter moved seats for the second period, so I'd love to know what Carter thought of this game. And this is how you fucking carry. Oh, come on. Yeah. Good morning, afternoon, and my turn, jackass. Sweet. Get the fuck out of here. Well, it's been a while, hockey back at, I guess, Canada Life Center. I was going to say the MTS Center, because that feels more natural, but, you know, they, they'll, they'll probably change the name in about a year. Anyways, but it was great being back to seeing a game live. I miss this. I, I miss this. I, one thing I got to say, uh, not about the game, but uh, cool um, renovations that the Jets have done. First off, the Wi-Fi works there. Great. And uh, secondly, this new like craft beer thing that they made out of the old Budweiser lounge and they got rid of the Moxies and what, great stuff, great stuff. Uh, new concessions, good, good, good. Uh, game, game, how'd the game go? Uh, game was good. Uh, our target goal that we were hoping for was that uh, the Jets would score at least five considering the Bakersfield Condors were playing for Edmonton. I like literally Cody Cece and like two others were like the only guy names I even recognized. Um, and it's funny because we played a lot of guys too, but I mean, we played like our entire first and fourth line and our backup goaltender. So it was a game that we absolutely should have won. So our target goal was five goals. They got it. Wasn't really happy with Stanley's game. However, he did at least get an assist later on on a pretty sweet shot. Uh, just his defensive zone. Like he was just big and weak in the sit. Like he, he got like reverse hit by a guy who was like 5'10". And it's like, you're like six foot seven. Come on. But overall... 5-0 uh, win, not much that you can complain about. Back to Zach. Yes, he left for the second period, he came back for the third. A uh, lovely couple sitting next to me for the third period, or for the first two periods, they weren't there for the third period. So either I scared them off, which is unlikely because I've seen them before. Maybe yeah. I scared them off. They came back, they're like, oh, this fucking thing. Yeah, but they missed a real good ending. Um, 
And speaking of which, of great things, Morgan Barron would then score in the slot to make it 4 nothing reaction here. There! Yeah! scoring play more baron from morrissey and nemesnikov nemesnikov having a multi-point night and deservedly so he made some great blocks in front too to break up lanes as well it's worth noting the jets nearly scored on the first play of the game on a two-on-one that shifley just couldn't connect on the pass like there were opportunities to make this more than a five score game and what would make it a five score game kyle goddamn capo bianco with eight laser beam reaction here. Ah. Sal has got the best angle. Oh. oh! Holy shit! No, he did not! Woo! No, he did not! Is that Rumble Bianco? You're damn Kyle Cabobianco from Elias Salomonson and Parker Ford on the power play to make it 5 0 Winnipeg Jets. And I, there's like, Picker just stares, just stared into the soul of that shot. I don't know how he had an angle to, to hit that to go bar in, but he does. Cabobianco will do nothing for 20 games and then randomly absolutely snipe. Like, Cabobianco might have the best shot. He, he might have a 99 overall shooting accuracy with a 2% overall consistency rating. When he fucking hits, he fucking hits. Um, but yeah, no, honestly. And then the Jets have to kill a couple more penalties, and then they just nurse this lead. They they, they kill them great, which was the big uh, halter to getting the shutout. They do end up picking up the shutout. Good for Laurent Brossois. Uh, very good. Uh, welcome back. Very good welp welcome back for him. Honestly, everyone was very happy to see him. And it was nice to have such a calming influence in the net with our backup goalie. Uh, three stars of the game. I'm going to give uh, the third star. So honorable mention is going to be uh, going to Gabriel Velarde and Rasmus Kupari. Uh, third star will go to... Ooh, uh... Elias Salmonson. Uh, second star will go to uh, Laurent Brossois. And first star will go to Vladislav Nemestikov. I really liked his game tonight. He was great both ends of the ice and ended up picking up two assists. So, yeah, really good game. Really happy with it. Let me know down below your guys' thoughts in the comments. I, I'm excited. This season is really beginning to... There's, there's hype building and... The, the masculine urge to just go, we are so fucking back! But I'm not getting there yet. But I'm getting there, and I'm happy. And I'm excited. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Oh, Connor. Oh, the old special for Connor and